the Apple Vision Pro demo, and why you should go experience it. This is Mac Voices. Mac Voices is supported by Take Control Books, one of the very best sources of clear, concise information on not only Apple's various operating systems, but also key Apple and third-party utilities, and more. Visit TakeControlBooks.com and start your library today. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, it's Mac Voices Live. It's Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, whatever time that is, wherever you are. You could be with us on YouTube at youtube.com slash TV, or if you can't tonight, next Tuesday, the Tuesday after that, the Tuesday after that, because that's where we are when we are. So please join us. We have some of our friends in the chat room who are joining and will be joining throughout the night. That could be you. Uh, a lot of, it seems like there's a lot of stuff going on right now. Some of it good, some of it maybe not quite so good from an Apple perspective. We're going to get to all that, but before we get to that, we're going to get to our panel and let you know who's here. As he always is, it seems, Mr. David Ginsburg up in the top left of my screen, probably not yours, but mine. Dave, good to have you. Great to be here, Chuck. Thanks for having me, and uh, great to see everybody this week. Uh, looking forward to good conversation. Yeah, there was a lot of, a lot of big announcements this last couple of days here, so we got some good stuff to talk about. Yeah, trying to keep up with it. It's and, and prioritize. It's a little crazy stuff. Brian Flanagan Arthur's is here as well. Brian, good to see you. I, I understand you're catching a flight out early tomorrow, so hopefully you can stick around for the whole show. Yeah, definitely looking forward to it. And uh, if I need an extra cup of coffee tomorrow morning, that's all right. Okay, good. We'll we'll send you a Starbucks gift card. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Looking very springish, Mr. Eric Bolden. Um, either that or, I don't know, he's, he's sort of surrounded by his flowers. I'm not sure what to make of it. It's his beautiful aura. I'm seeing the NBC peacock. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, well, yeah, I, okay, almost. So I had to break out there, spring. You know, this is just... This is, Turning into a really nice month. <laughs> Not supposed to, but it is. And it's only five days in. <laughs> yeah. uh, and there's well, still more stuff to come. I can hardly yeah. wait. Well, oh. And as was pointed out to me earlier this week, it's meteorological. Meteorological. Is that the, I can't say it right. Spring. Spring. So, you know, for what it's worth. Marty Gentius is back with us as uh, I'm happy to say he's he's always now part of this crew. Marty, good to see you. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to be here. I, You know, the, with the initial announcements this week and rumors of what's going to happen next week and maybe the week after, I just see this as spring shopping season. Uh, so <laughs> I'm cleaning out my yeah. closets, selling stuff out, and uh, looking at some new things. Good. So you'll give us your address in the chat so that when you have your yard sale, we can all come over yeah. and take things off your hands. Yep, certainly. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Jim Ray is here. Jim, it's good to see you. You look like you've been electrified. Wait, Jim Ray's here? Where? I, mean, I want to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just let it go. <laughs> um <laughs> Speaking of electrification, um, Jeff Gamut is here. <laughs> that hesitation where you're deciding, do I even introduce him or just move on? <laughs> I heard that. I just want to point out that Jim Ray is here. Wait, where? <laughs> Webb Bixby is here, too. And I know exactly where he is because he's right center uh, bottom of my screen. Webb, it's great to have you back with with your uh, one of your royal quilts. Yeah, I, I put that up because it's your favorite. I, I hope to have a different one next week to show, and I'll give you the story about it next week. So, so, but uh, I I knew this was one of your favorites, so I put it up here tonight. And good to see everybody. Yeah, I have I have always had a thing for geometrics. I don't know why, but it just it seems very logical and organized, unlike most of my life. So. <laughs> I, I aspire to be like Webb's quilt. Yeah. <laughs> Last but not least, um, on, on a on a political day, day, Super Tuesday, he's got a political background. Mark Fuccio, good to see you. Hello, Mark. everyone. I don't think it's a political background, you know, unless you think voting is a uh, you know is, 
is political, which I suppose it is. But uh, thanks for the invitation, and I look forward to the conversation coming up. Yeah, always good to have you. So I'm going to commandeer the first part of the show a little bit and and uh, and let you know that over the weekend, I had the opportunity to go test out an Apple Vision Pro. <clears throat> Awesome. And it was, I, I want to be real careful because for those on the panel and also out there in listening land um, and watching land, I don't want to spoil the demo for you because, but I came away convinced that if you have even the slightest interest in Apple technology or what's happening, you really need to go and go to an Apple store and try this out. Because the demo does not disappoint. It really does give you an idea of what this kind of spatial computing, I know we're not supposed to call it AR or VR, and it's really not. But this is something, as as Tim Cook has said, it's new. It's not exactly like anything you've seen before. And that's the part that I, I want to communicate. Does anybody disagree with that that has done the demo? Am I am I overselling it? Am I underselling it? You're underselling it. Okay. Uh, so to build on what you said, Chuck, if you're interested in where technology is headed, even if you're not interested in AR, VR, stuff you wear in your face, you owe it to yourself to go and do the uh, the Vision Pro demo, so at least you have an idea of of where computer technology is headed. That's a lot more eloquent than I was, Jeff. That that says it well. You do feel like you're at you know the beginnings of when the iPhone came out, and some of this we've talked about before, but. You know, when the iPhone came out and you were just getting an idea of what it was like to carry that power and that information and that access around in your hand, that this is a whole different thing. Yeah, any, it's, any, it's new. Yeah, anybody else? Brian, I know you did the demo. Um, again, I'll yeah. ask you, am I underselling it, overselling it? No, I, I think you're underselling it. Uh, the way that I was thinking of it was any of the... When I came home after experiencing the demo and I was telling my my family about it the next day, telling colleagues about it, it's hard to put into words because it's so experiential. It's not something you can, yeah, you can read articles, you can talk to people about it, but it's so, so much of an experience to be able to take on rather than something that could be um, understood in a, in a full way just from you know, watching others on video or reading articles. Eric, Marty, you two, we've already heard from you in, in the past shows about the the experience. How how do you feel like the experience of using it measures up with the the rush you got from doing the demo? I think there was a, a rush from doing the demo. Um, actually, I, I didn't do the demo. But I had seen enough online. I picked it up, came home, and and started playing with it. Um, my son was with me. He did partial of the demo. And, uh, you know, I get the, since I have it, and I, I don't know if Eric has got, this is his custody week or not for his, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, get to, I get to put the thing on for a couple hours a day. So it's a completely different experience for me now. It, it, and um, I asked for, uh, a, you know, an opportunity to test pilot um, OmniFocus on um hmm. on the device because i really want to use that and i got ken ken case sent me a link to be able to test pilot it and so i'm having some fun with that but um it's a really different experience when you've got it sitting around your house and you can pick it up for an hour or a couple hours during the day so i would not undersell uh the demo and would encourage everybody to have that experience whether they're planning on purchasing one or not, because it kind of opens your eyes to like, wow, this is what the future could look like. It's maybe not there for me right now, but um, but this is what the future could look like. Eric? There's, there's a sense of delight 
that you get from the demo that as an adult, you really don't get very often. Uh, I mean, if I think way back in time to the first time I experienced <clears throat> a, a view master and was kind of clicking through that, it was it was a lot of fun back, I don't know, first or second grade mm-hmm. or whatever. And this is a sense of delight even better than that. Um, so the demo definitely is worth it. Uh, you don't get that same experience every single day while you're using it. Uh, and I think depending on what people are doing with it over time, they have sort of different experiences. I'm just finding that I have a whole lot of places where I can use it day to day. And, 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 and really, I don't want to give it up. <laughs> And this whole shared thing, I'm not sure how much longer it's going to last. I mean, it it's <laughs> it, it, it might there might be some limited bits to it. Um, I may rethink this whole share thing and, and buy out the other shares and tell them if they still want to do it, they have to find somebody else. Uh so far I've been lucky. The other people I'm sharing with have been really busy with projects and just haven't had time to use anything because they're using it mostly for entertainment. So when work gets really busy, they don't have time for the extra entertainment. They're not looking to use it. In my case, I, I'm i using it. Basically, it gives me the ability to take a laptop and wherever I happen to be sitting, have my largest, clearest screen right there with me even if i'm sitting in a car i still get to experience the large screen and and it's i it's just wonderful it, you know i i don't have to go home or go back to my regular office to actually get work done i can just sit and screens pop up and everything else i need is right there there's plenty of space it's worked really well for me. So your your friends are subsidizing your current Vision Pro at the moment. Yes, they are. <laughs> Eric, I feel like it. there's a metaphor for uh, relationships in general in there. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, or marriages. On the other Which, hand, they didn't pay the full price and have something sitting in the corner and feel guilty about it not being used. Eric, I have a question. My precious. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, go ahead. Uh, so what sort of work are you doing you know, on uh, the Vision Pro? Um, uh, mostly it's endpoint protection stuff. So I'm, I'm bringing up tables of machines, and then I've got other reference documents. Uh, So I end up basically with three or four screens worth of information, some reference materials, some specific machines, um, some background histories, and then current status. And then it's checking to see who's out of date, who needs updates, and then um, terminal windows to remote into machines for some updates, reboot machines, and so on. Okay, so if I can play that back, I think what I hear you saying is you're you're mostly reviewing uh, your reports or other analysis, and you know you're enjoying the ability you can have multiple screens, which be something that's really difficult on a device like an iPad, for example. Uh, it's something possible on a Mac. Um, you know, but uh, you're mostly looking at, you know, uh, information and you're not, uh, you know, how often do you need to, you know, input or, you know, annotate or edit something? And, you know, if you need to do something like that, um, what is it? Is, are you in, are you putting in, uh, typing in information or or what? I, I keep a keyboard and a trackpad with me. Okay. So I basically, I take a laptop and i take control of the laptop screen and bring that up and then from the laptop i can uh connect with the vpn i can run all my terminal commands have all that going and then i have separate 
separate terminal, well, one terminal window on the computer, one terminal window that's running through the uh, vision, and a uh, book reference, and a, a couple browser windows. Okay, and a final final question. You know, what, what benefit is the Apple Vision Pro uh, creating for you that you could not do previously with uh, you know just a Mac or iPad or other devices? I was carrying around an Apple Studio display. Oh, oh, that's this not. is a lot smaller. It's much lighter. I don't want to arm wrestle you. <laughs> and the power generator to go with it. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah. So they're they're like that didn't work super easily well in a car in the front seat of the Prius. I mean, I kind of got it working, but it wasn't comfortable. Um. This this works pretty well. I can pull up outside of a building, fire everything up, do what I want to do, put it all away, and move on to the next spot. Great. Eric, are you are you being serious that you were carrying around a, an Apple Studio? Uh huh. They're not that heavy. No, no. But I'm just thinking about the just the, the physicality of. Oh, it, then I will know. arm wrestle you. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a lot lighter than when I used to carry around an iMac. That that was painful. Well, yeah, that would be. Yeah. So, um, but this is even better. Okay, but and you're you are moving from location to location, and you want need that experience to the to the degree that you were carrying an Apple Studio display. Yeah, I mean, so, for a while, I was doing um, a, a fourteen inch laptop and an iPad, and having the iPad as the second screen. Um, this current way is more responsive than that. And gives me this this screen real estate I need. Um, the 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 studio display. I mean, I I have a studio display. Uh, well, actually, I have an iMac in my office, a studio display at home, the studio display in one of the remote offices, and then I can you know always unplug somebody's studio display and plug it in. Uh, studio display works well with the iPad or with the the Mac, so both of those kind of work. But, um, you know, I, I guess what I'm looking for now, the um, what I'm looking for now is maybe to look at like uh, maybe a, a, a MacBook Air, something with a backlit display or backlit keyboard. Um, because when you look through the screen at a keyboard, if it's at all dim, sometimes it's hard to tell what you're typing on. But if it's a, a backlit keyboard, you can see the, all the keys. And 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 I had the 14-inch laptop with an external display. That kind of worked. But what I'm finding now is, you know, I could go with a lighter laptop with a backlit keyboard and, you know, the virtual display. And that actually works a little bit better. And times when I'm just sitting in a building, you know, like uh, in a atrium area on one of the tables or whatever, um, with the um, with either carrying around a display or firing up a, a laptop and, a, and an iPad, all those screens are public. So you know, trying to angle yourself so there's nobody behind you and you're not sharing your data, that's a little bit more difficult. With the vision. I just pop up screens, I do whatever I want to do, and as long as I'm not having a conversation with somebody, all of that screen is guaranteed private. And in fact, as soon as you take over the screen of the laptop, the laptop screen goes dark, so nobody is seeing anything. Obviously, you know, there's some situational awareness stuff I wouldn't want to necessarily sit in a dark park and hope nobody, you know, came upon me while I'm distracted. But you know, in in a work building, that that works really well. A couple other things that that occurred to me during the demo, but also after the demo, the the weight question, the tired neck question, the uncomfortable fit question was irrelevant. I did not now. Admittedly, I had it on for thirty twenty to thirty minutes, so it's not like I've had it on for hours. But I did not find the experience uncomfortable in the least. Um, mm -hmm. That and, and I was when I first put it on, it's like, oh yeah, that this does have some weight to it. And after that, 
maybe because I was distracted, maybe because it was only 30 minutes, but it was it was a non-issue. And of course, I didn't have the strap across the head. I just had the one where you adjusted and put it on like a, I guess, like a scuba mask. The other thing, though, that really impressed me, and now keep in mind that I'm in a, an Apple store and it was a rainy day, so it was a very busy Apple store, but the audio was phenomenal. And I didn't. I did not have AirPods in. I did not have noise canceling headphones in. I didn't have. I just had the, the Vision Pro on, and I had no trouble hearing anything in spite of the noise around me. The one thing that I I didn't even think to check is, you know, to to, to find somebody else who was doing a demo and see if I could hear what they were what they were seeing or the, the audio to what they were seeing. But I've I. I uh, there had been I think some discussion about do gee do I ne need a pair of AirPods do I need these new AirPods that will go with this and it's like well maybe if in a in an ideal situation it would it would enhance the experience but I don't feel like it's a terrible in fact I think it's a very very good experience without them. Uh, Marty, the I'm, only yeah the only exception I'd say is is on an airplane because you've got a lot of engine noise. Uh, and stuff going on with that. That's where the AirPods really do help um, okay. in more of an isolation. But in general cases, probably not. Okay. The last point I wanted to bring up, because, again, it was a very busy Apple store. I had a chance to talk to a couple other people after they had finished their demo and I had finished mine. Comparing ex the parts of the experience and what really impressed them or, or where they would see it. And it just brought home to me, again, a point that we've made here a number of times, that these devices are not for everybody. And I'm not just talking about the Apple Vision Pro. I'm talking about the, the, the laptops, the iPads, the Mac Studios, the studio displays. I mean, the days are gone that you can say this device is going to be the one thing that is perfect for everyone. I mean, even, even the models of iPhone, you know, the... We know we know Brittany and Kelly when they are here, you know, they prefer the smaller phones. A lot of us feel like we want the bigger phones. Some people want cheaper phones. Some people don't want all, all of that space. I I just feel like we need to examine all of this because I feel like that's something the tech press has been kind of doing here. Is they're trying to, to declare a winner or a loser as far as the Vision Pro. And I don't think there is one. I, I was fascinated by what Eric said some of his use cases were. All of a sudden, it makes perfect sense as to why he would have it as a potential business machine with everything he's doing and needing to move around. So I just I, I don't mean to get preachy here, but I just it, it really brought home to me the fact that all these great products, we all use them in different ways and just because something isn't doesn't suit you or doesn't suit you now doesn't mean that it doesn't suit me or might not suit you later. I don't know if that's wise or not, but that's that's I just came away with such a realization of that. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. The the demo is still worth it though. Oh my, absolutely. Cause I'm Eric, I, I feel like I'm not sure you can appreciate maybe what the Vision Pro could do for you, depending on what you do, until you really experience it. And and if you don't, I mean, if you listen, if you walk out of that, walk away from that demo and say, "Well, that was a waste of time," man, I'll, I will be shocked. There's no hope for you. Yeah, and Eric's got a skill set that he can kind of just take the demo and go, okay, this is how I can use this. This is how I can use that. This is how most users don't have that skill set to kind of build it into their workflow. And that's where I think you get a lot of people saying, well, it's good for movies. Okay, but it's too expensive for movies. Um, I don't need one single use. That's what I see it for. Um, but I, I'm listening to Eric. I've been amazed in terms of how he's managed to integrate all that. Um, into the work that he does. I'm doing much more pedestrian things with him, but uh, it's more of a, for me to be able to shift from sitting in front of these computer screens to a different place to do some some simple work to organize my day and then come back here to work on that work. Um, but Eric, you really have it well integrated into what you're doing. Yeah. 
Yeah, works very well. It just, it, I know we're going to continue to talk about it. I'll be anxious as other members of the panel, you know, do their demos and come back and share what their impressions are. Because I, again, I think that there's a, a value to hearing different people's experiences and what wowed them or didn't wow them. And, and I don't know if anybody in the uh, in the chat room has done them done the demo yet or not. I know I think Cletus said it was six hours away for him. Um, it's worth the trip, Cletus. Trust me. Um, but you know, if 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 you all share your enthusiasm for the demo, even if you don't feel like the Vision Pro is for you right now, how do you feel about the demo? All right. Well, that's the Vision Pro. Anything else that anybody would like to throw in on the Vision Pro before we move on? Um, did they tell you when you were looking at what the the window was for delivery if you bought one that day? No, Web. I didn't even ask. You're, you're <laughs> muted, I think. Or, I, I'm oh, for me, Web, when I went in, which was what like a week after uh, they were available, I could walk out of the store that day with one. Yeah. I love the fact that they had the Vision Pro sitting there, but of course, then they had the marshmallow sitting on the table as well. Even though they, the, the, the Vision Pro was not being put into or taken out of the marshmallow, it was just there, just so you got a chance to see it up close. I did not get to see the marshmallow. Oh. That's what it looks like. It's a big marshmallow. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it, I feel like it, it should have a visor on it, and then you put it on, it's part of your spacesuit. <laughs> or it's a pillow. You know, there was one other question I wanted to ask the group. It's been probably, I don't know, a year, year and a half since I had a, 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 meta, a, a quest on, a MetaQuest. Um, has any, does anybody else have one of the Meta devices? And Marty, you do. Okay. How do you feel it compares, and and not functionality because that's a whole different. It's a whole different thing, but just as as the the um, I guess the image that you're seeing. Do, do you feel it's close, comparable, not even close, um, or is it? Does it have more to do with the content that you're trying to watch on it? Um, I you know I don't do much with the MetaQuest except uh, play golf. Um, and there are a couple of pass through games that you can do. Uh, the complaint about the vision pro was the expectations were set really high on the pass through. So with the expectations really high, the folks came back and reviewers came back and said, oh, the pass through is, is not as clear as I'd like it to be. I think it's a better pass through than what you get on the meta three. Um, and in terms of clarity of video, any video that I've played in the Meta 3 or has not been as crisp, clear, bright, standout, dimensional as you get uh, with the Apple Vision Pro. So on those comparisons, it's one thing, uh, you know, I've already mentioned in the past, I see this as a productivity product, whereas the Meta 3 is, is a gaming product. It's VR and AR. It's not really spatial computing. Um, so yeah, that's, that would be my take on it. Um, I haven't picked up my meta three since I, since I've got the vision pro, I should probably go back and, uh, spend some time with it. It has one really kind of cool demo game that comes with it, uh, which is the alien invading your living room and, and creating a augmented reality situation. That's a lot of fun, but past that. The gaming goes back to the kind of standard gaming that you do with the Meta 2. There's not a lot of difference. Yeah. Just, <clears throat> pardon me, curious, because, you know, that's the inevitable thing. And we talked about Zuckerberg's comments uh, a while back that I, I don't, I can't say because I, ha I haven't done an A-B test, but this is just stunning. And I feel like at my recollection of the of the, of the the quest was that, yeah, okay, there's a TV screen that's a couple inches from my from my face. Here, it's like I'm I'm looking at I'm truly looking at something that something in nature that I'm I'm there. And and it's they're two different things. If 
go right now to, well, after the show, go to your TV set, get up, you know, reasonably close to it, let it fill your vision. And, and that's kind of the impression I had of the, with, with the Oculus, but with the, 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 uh, the vision pro don't even think about the fact that I'm looking at a screen or screens. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.